Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to talk about a drop shot fishing tip that will help you catch more fish, mostly land more fish when you're out there on the water. A lot of times when you're fishing with those very small nose hook drop shot baits, you'll skin hook fish and then they'll end up throwing the hook on the way to the boat. Usually it's a very high land percentage. A lot of times they're not actually going to throw that hook when it happens, but what happens is you don't get enough meat in the fish's mouth. And as you put pressure on that fish, It'll wear a hole in that little area that you hooked and eventually that fish will just pull that hook out and it'll rip that skin free. The way we're gonna rig up our drop shot today will keep that from happening. You're gonna get meat on fish every single time and if you get a good hook set on these, your land ratio is gonna go even higher on the drop shot rig. So stay tuned, let's get right into it. We're gonna break down everything in today's video, then we'll head out on the water and show you how it works and land a couple fish with it. So for starters, let's talk about what this rig is uh, and what we're gonna do to the rig and then we'll show you how to rig it up, the rod and reel selection, and then we'll go out on the water. So basically the only thing we are gonna change on our drop shot rig from any other drop shot video that I've done is change the hook. And this is a VMC Finesse Nico hook here. It has a fluorocarbon little keeper at the front and I get them in very small sizes. So I would never actually Nico rig something with this. Um, I use the finesse, the weedless Nico hooks for like wacky rigging and stuff like that. I would never use this for wacky rigs or anything. This is a size, I want to say this one's a size two, but I have them as small as a size four. That's the range that I like to use for this drop shot technique. Um, mostly because you don't want to impede the action of your bait by going to too big of a hook. So I also carry these hooks. You'll notice it's the same ones I use for my largemouth setup. I'll carry these hooks in a two aught and I'll Texas rig my drop shots doing that. But for this, what we're about to do, a size two or a four is all you need. Other than that, the drop shot rig is exactly the same. I use my same stick weights. Size of the bit weight depends on the depth of your water. I have an eight pound test fluorocarbon leader on here, 15 pound test lime green braid so I can see when that bait's on the bottom and feel everything. And then I just have it on my Shimano Sedona with a cash and core spinning rod, seven foot medium. Same drop shot that I would use for an open hook one. And I still do use open hook drop shots. There's a time and a place for both. Um, but if you're ever losing fish or you're trying to get a good hook set on them, that's when I'm gonna go to this guy right here. Usually around bigger smallmouth is when I'm gonna do this. So Great Lakes fish, where they get those thick mouths. When you get that hook with a tiny nose hook, you can pull hooks on this fish where this will get a little bit better of a hook set. Um, and oftentimes, even fish that are very, very small, like Pittsburgh River fish is where we're gonna go use this today. Those fish have such thin mouths that if you get that hook, the nose hook in there, it can pull skin really easily where this gets back inside their mouth a little bit and hooks them a little bit deeper. So that's the reason that I do this. And then all we're gonna do is thread this on here. So we'll show you how to rig one up here real fast. So basically what I'm gonna do with my hook here is thread this worm on here so it's perfectly straight. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my flat worm, I'm gonna line it right up in the front of my bait here. And then once I get it all lined up in the front, I'm just gonna stab right down through. So I'm just gonna carry this hook around like I would put on any other jig trailer, make sure it comes out so it lines up straight. And then as I feed it around the bend, I'm gonna go over that fluorocarbon keeper and not over the eye of the hook. Just like that, your drop shot is nice and straight on that hook there. Uh, and the hook sits way further back in the bait. And that's why you don't want too big of a hook. It really depends on what kind of bait you're fishing. Um, but like these flatworms, that two or a four is all the bigger you need to go. It sits almost halfway back in the bait. And if a fish grabs that, it's getting a hook every single time. So you will lose a little bit of action in your bait by doing that but mostly it will not affect your hookup ratio or your bite ratio for putting it in front of fish versus a nose hook. So you will land more fish, you might lose a couple more bites, but the bites that you do get will come in the boat. The time that I really like to use this is anytime around open water where there's not really anything to get snagged on. I use it in like rock, stuff like that. That's about it. Um, if you're fishing around grass, wood, if you pull that hook into it, it's getting snagged every single time. Um, but when you're fishing a lot of rock, um, areas where smallmouth roam, current breaks, stuff like that, that's where that can really shine and get you some fish in the boat. So let's head out on the water. We'll fish this guy around and see if we can catch us a couple fish. All right, so now that we talked about the drop shot rig, let's rig this thing up and actually get to fishing with it and show you why this uh, threaded hook method is just such an effective way to catch fish. Uh, first things first, 
We gotta grab ourselves a tried and true Berkeley flatworm. We're fishing down on the Pittsburgh rivers today. Um, so gonna be a lot of small fish for most likely. That's just the way this river sets up. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of big fish in it, unfortunately. Perfect. All right, green pumpkin flatworm. Uh, it's like the go-to down here on the river or any smallmouth fishery, but they seem to love a Berkeley flatworm down here in the river. Uh, if you've never fished the Pittsburgh rivers before, it is known for very, very small fish. So we have the 3.6 inch flatworm. So we have the small flatworm. Um, the lowest winning classic weight of all time came out of the Pittsburgh rivers. Three day total of 12 pounds, five ounces or something like that. So this place in all honesty is trash. It's also Labor Day weekend. So it's an absolute madhouse out here. It's been tough fishing, um, but this is a perfect place to come down here and talk about different techniques because you can actually catch some fish on them. And the biggest thing with the Pittsburgh rivers is that a lot of these fish have very small mouths um, and they're very paper thin. So they'll pull off on those smaller hooks sometimes, like we talked about earlier on why you wanna use this threaded hook option. So we got our worm right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hook and just go straight in the nose of the bait right there, like you're gonna rig up a Texas rig, but you're gonna go all the way around until it comes out on the bend right here and just basically thread it on there like you would a trailer to a jig or anything else. And that hook is gonna hold it up on there. So now your hook sits this much further back in the bait. And then we already talked about how effective that can be and why you wanna do that. Um, so now we got our flatworm ready to go and we're gonna get to fishing it and see if we can catch us some bass. There we go. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. And hopefully this is a bass. It doesn't feel like a bass, but I'm hoping it is. There's no way this is a bass. Oh, it's a giant. Oh my gosh, it's a giant bass. Okay, so the reason that we use this hook is gonna be shown exactly here once we get this one in. Let me land this fish first, because this thing's huge. All right, wow. Okay, that is like an anomaly of a Pittsburgh River bass right there, oh my gosh. You can see, if I had that fish on a size two drop shot hook, that fish was coming off nine times out of 10. What you can see right here, see if I can get it to focus here. See how that hook is right behind his jawbone? It's because it has that longer shank. If that hook didn't have that longer shank, that fish would have been skin hooked right on the jaw right there and probably would have come off. So anytime I'm fishing open water for smallmouth and around uh, no cover, that's when I'm, no cover meaning like there's rocks and stuff down there, but anytime I'm fishing around stuff that you can't really get hung up in, that's when I'm gonna go with that open hook right there. That is in a magnificent Pittsburgh smallmouth right there. We're gonna let him go. We're gonna try and catch a couple more off this spot right here. There we go. Not a big one whatsoever. But we got some other videos we got to film and the sun is setting on us fast. So we're going to end this one here. Awesome to catch that giant doing this technique and showing you how effective that can be. This guy absolutely choked it uh, and he wasn't coming off either. But if you're ever going smallmouth fishing and you're just going to go fish some open water, some light rock, nothing you can really get hung up on, try that drop shot technique and you'll land more fish. If you wanna see how I target largemouth using the same hook, but rigging it differently, check this video out right here. I use the same drop shot hook to rig it up just a little bit differently and I'll catch largemouth doing that same technique. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Hit that like down below and subscribe so you don't miss any more of my fishing videos coming up. Thanks for watching.